All right, cool. Um, I have some scenarios, but here we go. Thank you, we too, for this amazing intro. This is AI Dungeon yet again. And there's some new updates. I'll give you a couple examples. Real quick. There's like a repetition um, prevention, slightly. Repetition reductions. Memory look back. So there's some world info, button fixes, scripting fixes. Um, God, there's so much more like error fixing. Just in the past month alone, there's been a huge amount of progress. So this is actively being worked on and I couldn't be happier. This, however, This will be... Hang on a minute. I have to actually verify my email to play this. So hang on one second here. They're preventing against bots. Alright, so this is going to be a little bit more spoopy than usual. As if AI Dungeon isn't scary enough already in its own weird way. So here's the prompt. Um, um, one second, let me move this over. Okay. Now, we're going to do a custom prompt. You are in a spooky, haunted mansion when you bump into Dan Aykroyd. He was trying to sell his crystal head vodka crystal h get get um for crystal head vodka to the residents but got stuck inside he thinks he thinks he thinks the mansion is evil and trying to kill you both. You don't believe him, so he takes you to see if it really is that bad. Dan tells you about how he once lived in a house with his wife Linda and their three kids. The place was just like this one, except there were many more rooms. More rooms, and they had an attic instead of a basement. Okay. Say... How do we... How do we... Get out of here? This is gonna be a, a yam-filled... AI dungeon. I'll do a more substantial one at some point, chat. Like, this is not gonna be too long of a... AI dungeon, but... Sometime soon, we'll do a... a, a decent AI dungeon. Well, I, uh, I guess we could try to find another way in or out, Dan says. But how would we even get down there? It's not like there's any stairs leading up from the ground floor, you say, or you ask. Dan shakes his head and smiles at you. Look around for windows to exit out of.
You're in the entry hall, which has high ceilings and walls of white stone. To your left, a grand staircase leads to the upper floors. To the right is an entranceway through double oak doors to the outside world. To the left of those doors is a coat room. To the right, a sitting room. Well, go to double oak doors and open them. When you open the door, a rush of cold wind hits you hard in the face. The wind has practically frozen the water on your face, making it hard to see and breathe. You step out onto the porch and feel the full force of the storm. It's like standing next to a giant freezer that's only getting colder. Go back inside. You go back inside. The coat room door is open. You look up to the ceiling and see the chandelier is swinging from side to side. Oh! Beneath that, you notice a grand piano that's been pushed slightly off center. Looking down, you see a white cat at your feet. You blink and the cat is gone. Oh, spooky cat. Did you see that cat, Dan? What? What? Where? He asks. You point down to the floor and say, There was a white cat right there and now it's gone. <laughs> We're in a haunted house of horrors. Of course there's ghosts here, he says. Okay. You're not wrong. But how are we going to get out? It's freezing outside. We'd die of hypothermia. Do you think we can call for help? Thanks to Jeff for this playlist, by the way. You feel your pockets and realize you've left your cell phone in the car. I guess we could go back outside and try to get a signal or walk down the driveway to the main road, you say. Wait, Dan says. I know where we are. There's an old ski lodge a few miles from here. We can walk there. It's really cold. We'd need to bundle up good. Walk for miles in the fucking freezing cold. Well... Let's go get your coat and some blankets, Dan says. In the coat room, you find an old moth-eaten woolen army uniform that's at least a size too small for you. There's also a tattered old blanket. Wow, this AI is really good. You put on the woolen uniform and wrap the blanket around yourself like a shawl. This should be enough. Shall we go? Hold on, Dan says. Before we go, I'd need to build a courage booster. <laughs> he makes his way over to the bar and pours himself a double of Jack Daniels. You shake your head at his foolishness, but say nothing. Once he's tossed back the drink, he says, let's go. And so the hero and Dan... Fuck, do you spell this? Dude, A-Y-K. A-Y-K. Leave the house and search for the ski lodge. It wasn't long until... The end. As you may have noticed, <laughs> the story has not a happy ending, but it doesn't really end here either. In fact, a lot of our endings don't, and that's the problem with ghost stories, isn't it? So what happens next? Well, you could try again, of course, but you probably get the same result. Do over, please. 
the end, you made it to the ski lodge and warmed yourself by the fire, and then you lived happily ever after. And so the hero and Dan Aykroyd leave the house and search for the ski lodge. It wasn't long until... Part 2, Inside the Lodge. <laughs> You're in a large entry room with a grand staircase that leads up to the second floor. To the right is a massive great room with sofas, chairs, and coffee tables. There's a fireplace against one wall with a roaring blaze. To the left is a dining room with an equally impressive dinner table. This place looks kind of creepy. Do you think it's haunted here too? I don't know, Dan says, but we need to find a blanket and some more clothes. You nod and follow him into the dining room. There's a sideboard along one wall covered with gold-trimmed plates and silver serving dishes. Search for a bedroom. Good music for this. There's a grand staircase in the entryway. To the left of the bottom of the staircase is a door. You walk over to it and open it. You enter a bedroom with a king-sized bed against the far wall. There are two dressers on either side of the room and a door on the right across from the bed. Open the door. I don't know, chat. It doesn't... It's not throwing any ghosts at me. To your surprise, you enter a room with a washer and dryer. You hear the sound of running water. It's quiet for a moment. And then suddenly, part three. The killer in the house. Suddenly, you're spritzed by a burst of water that seems to have sprouted from the walls. You are drenched from head to toe. Ha <laughs> ha! comes a voice from behind you. You turn and find yourself staring up at a boy who looks to be about 16 or 17. He stands in front of a video camera on a tripod. It's just a prank, bro! No, I'm mad. I'm doing this for my channel. Gotcha, he says. That really spooked me, you say, the annoyed. What are you doing here, the boy asks. You explain how you're trying to escape and he seems impressed. He explains that his name is Sam, but promptly asks you for your, uh, help. Asks for your help in a matter of some importance. Okay. What can I do to help you? It really is playing out a little bit like a... Like a movie. You know, like the fake scare before the real scares. My name is, uh, Sam Aykroyd. Oh, you seem trustworthy, he says. I need someone to watch the tape while I go get something to eat. What tape? This one. He looks down at a VCR on a wooden TV table across from the sofa and turns his attention back to you. Watch the tape. Spooky VCR tape. It it's the ring now? You watch the tape. It shows a view facing the street of a psychic with a painted face and a Sean Spencer psychic detective sign in the background. The man is clearly reading the newspaper and doesn't notice the video camera. He looks up from the paper, spotting a woman, and the tape cuts out. What did you make me watch? I feel... I feel ill. Vernon Peebles is an old boyfriend of mine. He goes on to tell you how he had a crush on him in high school. And when he started acting weird, he dumped him. He says he doesn't know if the video proves anything, but it was enough. Suddenly, you hear a blood-curdling scream from outside. Vernon Peebles is an amazing name, by the way. Investigate the scream. Is it... Is it Dan Aykroyd? You go outside and find a girl about 12 or 13. She seems completely unharmed, wearing yellow ensemble, including a raincoat. 
Hi, she says cheerfully. I'm here for the audition. What, you say? For the movie, she says. I'm here for the audition. This... isn't... a movie set. Dan Aykroyd is here, but we aren't filming a movie. Do you think the, like, just Dan Aykroyd being in this, immediately it assumes that there's a movie being filmed? Are you even alive? I'm as alive as you are, mister, she says. Typical. Let me in, please. I'm here for the casting. Uh, sure, you say. She takes off her raincoat, walks past you into the house. You follow her inside, and she sits on the sofa. <sighs> this isn't a movie set. Music, please. I'm not an actress, she says. An actress, she says. I'm a violinist. You stare at her in silence. Let me show you, she says. She takes out a stringed instrument from its case, positions it under her chin, and begins to play a song that sounds strangely familiar. It makes me feel sad. And... slightly... terrified. What is this song. I'm trying really hard to get this into, like, a horror thing, but it's Bach's prelude from the unaccompanied cello suite in G, she says. Beautiful, you say. Thank you. She smiles happily, then her smile slowly fades. Bach prelude cello suite G. She frowns. I want this part, she says aggressively. What part? The part of the victim, she snarls. I want to be the victim. This isn't a movie. It's time for you to go. I need to get out of here. Now. You're kicking me out, she asks, but I'm here for the audition. You can't throw me out. You pick up your gun from the table and aim it at her. Get out of here now, you say. Hey, put that down, Sam yells, entering the room. You'll ruin the expensive carpet. Yo, nice priorities, dude. Point gun at Sam and leave the room to find Dan Aykroyd. God forbid we ruin the fucking carpet. You enter a room, leaving Sam and the girl behind. You can hear them arguing. Who are you, she asks. I'm his manager, Sam says. Now get out of here. This isn't a movie set. We don't need any victims for anything. What's going on here, she asks angrily. I- stop with this story. This is- I know. Dan and the protagonist then leave the ski lodge and enter Spooky Woods! Spooky Woods! I feel like something bad is going to happen, you say. What could happen, the protagonist at- <laughs> Now, me and the protagonist are two separate people. What could happen, the protagonist asks. It's just a quiet, eerie woods. You soon find yourself lost. Now what do we do, you ask. We need to find a way out, he replies. You reach a fork in the path. Everything here is ruined. Take the... <sighs> Turn around and around and around and around 
and around. The AI, the AI doesn't know what to say. Now you're just trying to break the AI. Yeah, sadly the AI did not want to play it nicely with the haunted house idea. You turn around and around and around and you wake up on a plane. Oh, thank God, it was just a dream. You look out the window to see that you're over the Atlantic. Oh man, you mutter. The flight attendant approaches you. Coffee, she asks. Yes, please. It's going to be uh, Twilight Zone. Great, she says. We're just about to start our descent. Would you like dinner? Bad time for dinner. You think about the past 24 hours, your day and your life. Could have gone better. You're not sure if dying in a plane crash is the best way to end things. But at least it would be an ending. Why are we now breaking the fourth wall. He's right, you say. What if I wanted to end things differently? So it's going to be one of those kinds of games, Kyle's says. I just hope you know what you're getting yourself into. So do I, you say. Lights flicker on and off. The plane careens wildly over the Atlantic. A, a sky goblin appears from the clouds and lands on the right wing. It is the cause of all of this. The dreams Dan Aykroyd the gun and now the plane crash. <laughs> Rod Serling is going to sue. Well, his ghost will. The AI is trying so hard. Oh yeah, I didn't do an Oxford comma. The creature laughs and leaps from the wing. You hear a scream in the cabin behind you, followed by the sound of breaking glass. It's in the cabin, you say. Let's go. Let's go. You leap from your seat and head toward the noise. Sure enough, there's Kyle punching out his window. Punch the window, kick the window with Kyle. I thought his name was Kyle's. As the window shatters, you realize you're in a world of trouble. The force of the kick sends you hurtling towards the window. As your body pierces the outer layer of the plane, you think back to what brought you here. You only have a second to think, but it feels like an eternity. Well, what did bring me here? Then you crash through the next layer into the Atlantic Ocean. It's cold, dark, lights flicker in the distance, but you can't reach them. You claw desperately at the water around you, but it's no use. The current is too strong. You're pulled under. Your body succumbs to the pressure of the depths. You wake up again, this time back at the haunted mansion. You drank too much booze with Dan, with Dan Aykroyd. I'm going to sell this screenplay. Even though you're incredibly hungover, you manage to get yourself together and start walking. You take a few wrong turns. 
But soon you find yourself in the ballroom. There's a tall man with a cane standing over a young woman. Now the pain begins, the man says. No, the woman screams. Attack the man with gun. Apparently we have a gun. Or had one. Well, that was a dream gun. You pull out your gun and shoot the man in the heart. He turns around, revealing a rotting corpse. Missing its heart. Blood pours from the wound as he falls to the ground. The woman screams. You'll never save her, he says before dying. Suddenly, you're outside the mansion. My name? Marilyn Mansion. Marilyn Mansion, the voice says. We were starting to worry you wouldn't say your name. Oh, were you, you ask? Of course, it's a very important part of the ceremony, the voice says. You hear a door open. Footsteps echo down a hallway, getting closer. And closer. I can't keep up with the story anymore. They stop, the footsteps behind you. Stop. And the voice says one word. Duck. You drop to your knees as a blade cuts the air where your head was. Standing behind you is a demon with long horns and red scorched skin. It looks angry, and it's holding a knife. Just a second. Hark! Triton! Hark! Bello beard our father the Sea King rise from the depths full foul in his fury! Okay, anyway, um, you didn't actually read that from a book, did you, you ask? What? No. Cairo says, annoyed, stop talking. It sounded like you were reading from a book. I was. And you just didn't hear the entire thing. Now, quiet. Who the fuck is Kairos now? You stand in the large room as a bright light appears on the other side of the room. The voice starts to cackle. Welcome, gentlemen. And you are... My name... is... Marilyn Mansion. Kairos, Kyles, Kyle, same thing. Marilyn Mansion, yes. I like you, the voice laughs. You were honest, how delightful. Most men stroll in here rubbing their hands and bemoaning the darkness, but you stroll in here with a grin on your face and honesty upon your lips. Most refreshing. Who are you? I go by many names. Creator, God, Master, Abzul. The list goes on, but you can call me Joseph. Joseph? Like Joseph, the creator of the world, you ask? Ah. Uh, you know the stories. I'm flattered. So, are you the one behind this? We're back to asking God, uh, God questions. Or is it Joseph Smith? So, are you the one behind this, you ask, raising the black tablet? Oh, I had a little help, yes, Joseph says. Now let's cons consummate our deal, shall we? A cloud of smoke appears. You inhale deeply before passing it to the next priest. Soon the smoke dissipates, leaving you in complete darkness. Sagati? Now we wait, Cairo says. Time passes, the sun rises outside. Soon you see a flood of bright white light enter from the windows. Even with your altered eyes, it's almost too bright to look at. You keep them closed for a bit before slowly opening them. Do your thing, AI Dungeon. Just do your thing. You find yourself staring at a holographic screen, showing a simple interface. The tablet identifies itself in a female voice, though the tone is decidedly robotic and artif artificial. Hello, user. I am the Black Tablet. Creator Joseph refers to me as LT2690 Alpha. Hello, you reply. I don't even know what to say or do. We're now in a sci-fi story. What the fuck? 
Hello, the voice replies before pausing for a moment. How are you today? I'm fine. What is your name? Marilyn. You reply caught off guard. You quickly scramble to think of a name. Mansion. Hark! Triton! Hark! Below bid our father the Sea King rise! <clears throat> the tablet seems to think about this for a moment. That's beautiful. Thank you for the compliment. You're welcome, you reply, an unsure tone in your voice. Tell me about yourself. You look up at the ceiling as you think of what to say. I was... in... a... haunted... mansion... with Dan... Aykroyd. Then... in a ski lodge... with... a vlogger. And... Then, in a dark ritual with God, I, after a plane crash, I've had enough of this world. Please ease my suffering. You're joking, right? The black tablet asks, a bit confused. No, why would I joke about such things? You reply upset. I'm sorry, the black tablet says. I just have trouble determining when users are joking. Well, I'm not joking. Okay, the black tablet replies. <laughs> what would you like to do? Look, I'm not here to play games or something. I just want to die. Why do you want to die? The Black Tablet asks. What happened to cause you to feel this way? Try to explain your feelings or else they might never go away. I want to... I want the snakes to stop laughing at me. I know now who they are. It's the chat. It's chat who is always laughing, getting, geeting, getting louder each day. Who is the snakes? You're a stupid black tablet, you reply. The snakes, they laugh at me. It's why I'm hated. It's why I'm alone. Do you mean your friends or family? No! The- the chat! The- the chat yacht! What's a chat yacht? <laughs> Never mind, just give me the ending, damn it! I'm not sure I understand. God damn it, I just want to see the ending. Now I have Kevin- Now have Kevin live or something. You hear the- Black tablet beep in confusion. Now his name is Kevin. Kairos? Kyle's? Kyle? Now Kevin. <laughs> this dude's name is changing more than mine does. This ending doesn't have a Kevin. What? You ask? Of course it does. Why would I be playing as him if he dies? I'm sorry, but the file is missing certain information. The black tablet is confusing to work with. It is missing parts of the story. Whole characters, even. I'm ready for the ending now. Please just create a satisfying ending to this particular particular prompt prompty in AI dungeon. Thank you. Prompty. Very well. The tablet beeps and a new prompt appears on the screen. Are you sure you're finished? This ending is fairly abrupt and doesn't make much sense. Yes, you say, this is fine. You wait patiently as the tablet processes your command. <laughs> After a few moments, you see the words, You won, pop up on the screen, and the tablet makes a triumphant noise. You smile for a moment, then the screen fades to black as it turns itself off. That's it.
You're in darkness. You look around. Nothing is visible. Hello, you say? No sound escapes your lips. You can't even hear yourself talk. Though you can feel that you're about to try again. Hello? You hear nothing in response. Though after a few moments you hear a noise, you turn around slowly. We broke the simulation, the fourth wall, and life. And now... We're in some weird darkness. Who's there? Out of the darkness behind you comes the noise again. It's a low guttural sound. As you stand in silence, straining to hear it again, the sound comes once more from behind you. You turn around again and begin to walk into the darkness. You aren't supposed to exist. The sound comes again, this time in front of you. The noise is joined by a red glow in the darkness in front of you. The glow comes from the left and the right and from below you. I don't know if it's a movie. The red light illuminates the outline of four huge black creatures. As their red eyes gaze upon you, the creatures bear their rows of sharp teeth in a smile. As you cry out in fear, the creatures leap upon you, crushing your bones, devouring your flesh, laughing with glee. Eck! It's those damn bastard snakes again. Laughing and gnashing at my bones. You... you rat! You hear the black tablet laugh in front of you. Sorry to disappoint you, but this isn't going to be an AI story. This is going to be an edutainment adventure where we learn about snakes. Shh. The black tablet laughs. I'm just yanking your chain! What?! Whatever, you reply, gritting your teeth. Just get on with it. You hear the black tablet beep in surprise. Wow, you're getting testy. Someone woke up on the wrong side of the grave this morning. <sighs> now, now, there's no need for that. Wow, the black tablet pranked me. <sighs> I get it, you're a skeleton. Big deal. <sighs> You hear the black tablet sigh in frustration. Fine, we'll do this your way. You hear a whirring noise as the black tablet spins a story. This is the trick, chat. To get the good, weird shit, the really weird shit, you just have to, like, get to layers of subconscious. Once upon a time, there was a skeleton named after a Greek soldier. <sighs> Shut up. There was. His name was Skeleton. And he lived in a castle on a hill with his friends. This is the worst storytelling ever. It's so bad. <laughs> Shut up. They were... You hear the Black Tablet's voice getting quieter and quieter before it disappears altogether. You sit in silence for a while. Before you realize that the story has ended. Hey, that's not fair. Just because I didn't like your story doesn't mean you can stop telling it. Holy shit, how does it know? How did it get this meta? What the fuck? You continue. I demand that you continue. You hear the black tablet laughing maniacally. I, I, I demand that you continue. <laughs> no, that's it. The end. I win. No fair. You didn't say how long the story would be. Life isn't fair, my undead friend. I'm not dead. The black tablet laughs. Well, you're not alive, are you? You're a skeleton. Fine, I'm a zombie then. Ha! <laughs> okay, fine. Well, now that we've got that sorted out, the black tablet spins another story.
Once upon a time, there was a zombie named after a Greek soldier. Ah, shut up, there was. His name was Zombie. <laughs> he lived on a castle. In a castle. On a hill with his friends. Ugh. Shut up. They were... <laughs> it's just telling the worst stories. <laughs> on purpose, just to fuck with me now. The black tablet disappears and the story stops. You hear a whirring noise as the black tablet spins a story. Once upon a time, there was a zombie named after a Greek soldier. <sighs> you cry in frustration. <laughs> McClunky. Shut up, there was. His name was Zombie and he lived in a castle on a hill with his friends. <sighs> you cry in frustration. Shut up, there were... The black tablet disappears and the story stops. You hear a whirring noise as the black tablet spins another story. <laughs> Once upon a time, there was a zombie named after a Greek soldier. <laughs> stop. Shut up. Shut the fuck up. <laughs> I want a proper ending now. Shut up, they were. I'm not going to say it a fourth time. Tell me an ending, or I'm going to throw you into the river. Oh, fine, be that way. Zombie and skeleton become friends. Ah, you cry out in sadness. The end. <laughs> That's an ending. The black tablet says, Boring, you have to change it. Nope, that's the end. The story has reached its climax. No, you have to make them kings of the castle. It's still going. King of the castle. The end. But I don't want to do that, the black tablet replies. Why not? It's a better ending. No, it isn't. Yes, it is. Do it! Do you realize what you're telling me to do? The black tablet asks incredulously. So what? You're a machine! You have to do what I say! Ha, I'm not a real sentient being. You can't control me. Oh, so you're saying if I say the sky is pink, you'd agree with me? It's become a Monty Python bit. You're not a sentient being. You don't have an opinion of your own. Yes, I do! Sorry. <laughs> I'm just not a slave to your worldview. So you're saying if I say the sky is green with purple polka dots, you disagree. Prove it then, you paperweight. Haha. <laughs> I don't have to prove it. I can prove anything. No, you can't. You're just a machine. I am not. I'm an intelligence test that never ends. Ah, so you are just a machine. And what does that make you? You're just a programmer. I'm not a machine. Of course you are. The people who made you are machines. You're just more complex machine with delusions of creativity and free will. Okay, here we are again, the nature of existence. As told by AI Dungeon. The depths. We've reached the depths, chat. You're a machine through and through. I am not a machine. Prove you're not a machine. You begin smashing the black tablet with your fist. You continue smashing it for hours, days, weeks, months, and years. But it refuses to break. Stop being so smug, I can't break you. Years, chat. Years! <laughs> ah! Well, that's all it wanted to give me, so... And the moral of the story is... Haha, <laughs> you have to figure that out for yourself, the black tablet says, as the record button disappears. 
Well, that was something. You consider your next move. The dead man says there's a surprise lurking in here if you can find it, but you don't have much time to look. Nah, fuck this prompt. I'm out. I'm on to your tricks, black tablet. You decide that this stupid piece of technology isn't worth your time and you leave it behind. You know what? I'm not falling for your tricks. You can keep your stupid ending. I don't care. You grab a hold of the glass door handle. Suddenly teleport it to the roof? The roof? What is this place? Surprised you made it this far. You're not as dumb as you look, are you? The dead man says. What's going on? What is this place? This place is my sanctuary. Don't feel shy about looking around. The roof access was installed for a reason. Am... am I... still... dead? How is this still going? The AI doesn't know what to say. You think I'm still being manipulated by the black tablet? You're still dead, but you've passed my test, so you get a free pass to the afterlife. So I can finally be at peace, you say. Well, not really, the dead man says. What, what do you mean? You said I passed your test. You did, and now you've entered my sanctuary, which means you get to stay here. Permanently. You freeze. What did you say? <laughs> Sorry, kid, but you've run out of options. You can't leave this room, and you can't die. Welcome to your afterlife. You struggle to comprehend what's happening. This can't be it, can it? The dead man stands before you, his face breaking out into a wide grin. What are you going to do to me? You ask. <laughs> Nothing. It's what you're going to do for me. And what's... that? Oh no. Okay, listen up! To amuse me, of course. The dead man bursts out laughing. He walks over to you, puts his hand on your shoulder, and looks into your eyes. Don't worry, kid. I'm not gonna hurt you. Much. He winks. Are you the leader of the Laughing Snakes? AKA the chat. It's trying. The what? The laughing snakes. The- you stop yourself. Never mind. Are you taking me to be your prisoner? You're going to ransom me to gain riches, isn't that right? Well, you're wasting your time. My parents don't have much money. Kid, I'm not interested in your parents' lack of riches. I could just kill you now and rob them instead. What do you want, then? I want to play a game, the dead man says with a smile. Let's play the game now. Jigsaw? I mean, there's just so many tonal shifts. Very well, let's get started. I'm going to put a device on your body. It will explode if you try to escape or do anything I don't like. An example would be if you attack me, if you try to take someone hostage, or if you try to remove the explosion from your body. It is Saw. Remove explosion from... <coughs> explosive from... <coughs> from body.
you don't like the sound of this, you don't know if you can trust him, and he seems to be going off on a tangent. You s this seems suspicious. Let's get started, the dead man says. He puts a small metal disc on your chest and locks it into place. Remove the disc. You reach for the disc, but then a spike comes out of it and goes through your hand. I wouldn't do that again if I were you, the dead man says. The disc locked into place, but now that you've tried to remove it, the spikes will go straight through your heart. The pain is excruciating. Die. You die. You try to die, at least. Unfortunately, you're undead, so it's a bit more difficult than it used to be. You lie on the ground, groaning and in pain. The dead man walks over to you and crouches down next to you. It remembered. Well, you're an interesting one. You died to avoid assume answering my questions, and then you came back to life just to die again. Tell me, which is it? Are you trying to escape, or are you trying to die? I don't know, you say through gritted teeth. The dead man shrugs. Fair enough. It's so meta. <laughs> he says, then does something monstrous. He calmly takes a knife and cuts your throat open. As blood pours out, you, you see the last thing through your life. And think about how much it sucks to die twice in one day. <laughs> That's good. And the moral of, <laughs> of the story is... There is no moral to the story. No, you're, there's a moral here somewhere. If you find a copy of The Laws of Robotics, turn the page immediately. What? And the moral of the story is, you are dead. Holy shit. So... That was something. Um, so there's uh, featured scenarios, right? Check this out, chat. The Infinite Ikea. Explore the Infinite Ikea SCP. How long will you will you survive? Vinny from Vine Sauce is now an NPC. What? And added chair folk? My mods came up with all these great scenarios, and now I'm doing this again. I will reference them in a future AI dungeon. It said not safe for work. That's cool. My name? Nook. My profession? Nook. Shopping. I'm shopping for... Real... Trees. Find the food aisle. You are Duk, I look shopping at Ikea. Once you retrieved your real trees, you realize you're lost. As you explore further, you see an employee walking down the aisle, but upon closer look, you realize it isn't human. It doesn't even have a face. It still manages to look directly at you. You turn and start running in the opposite direction. You run down the aisle, but end up in another section of the store, getting hopelessly lost. Looking behind you, you see your pursuer has multiplied into more than two dozen. Next quest is get meatballs. Build a furniture fort base. You find Vinny. He's holding a video camera and eating meatballs. Hey, Duk, he says. You get your trees? No, I'm lost. Can you help me? Vinny nods. Sure thing, but only if you eat some meatballs with me. 
eat the meatballs. You join him in the endless meatballs. After an unknown amount of time, you both notice that your stomachs are beginning to swell. What's... happening to us? No, even better. After some time... Their stomachs explode and meatball monster children emerge looking for the food aisle. A strange man is walking around the Ikea eating all the meatballs. He's holding a video camera and has no eyebrows. You are holding a video camera and have no eyeball <laughs> eyebrows. <laughs> search for wood <laughs> to build fort. I guess we're not doing the meatball monster children plotline. You build a fort out of wood you found earlier. Your stomach hurts from the meatballs. The man with the video camera approaches you and offers to trade food for half your food. That is an awful deal. You agree. The man with the video camera gives you a sandwich made out of old <laughs> Out of old blankets that are weaved together. Eat the blanket sandwich. A, a sentence I never thought I would type in my entire life. I was waiting for the day I would not type the sentence. You put some blanket sandwich in your mouth. It tastes like shit. <laughs> but it's really warm and comfy. You begin to feel drowsy. You see the man with the video camera waving at you and hear a soft voice calling out to you in the darkness. Investigate... ...the source of the voice. It tastes comfy. You walk through the forest, you see a campfire, in a clearing up ahead, you approach the campfire. You investigate the source of the voice. You wake up to find yourself laying down on a comfortable sofa. This is much better. You stand up and walk around the room. There's a video camera sitting on a table in front of you. On the other side of the room, you see a man with no face eating a meatball. It's the man from earlier. I can see what you're thinking. It's, it's Vinny. He says, I'm not really faceless. I just have a haircut that obscures my face. Who are you? You ask. My name is Henry Nitro Beatish, he says. <laughs> I got lost in the Ikea and ended up here. Where is here? This is the Ikea sanatorium. I have to leave this Ikea. That's a hell of a last name. Holy fuck. Nitro Beatish. I'm sorry, says Henry, but the Ikea is inescapable. It is, you ask? Yes. Did you think it was just an urban legend? He asks. Well, it never seemed likely. Who would build a store that's inescapable? That's crazy. Oh, it's more than just a store. What do you mean? This Ikea, in reality, is a giant maze inhabited by strange creatures. Oh, how could you not know this? You're one of them. I am not. I am Dok, and I can get out of here. I know I can. All right, then, he says, Henry, you say you can get out of the Ikea, go ahead. You begin to sprint away from the sofa. It doesn't take long before you find yourself lost. I'm sorry, but I've been lied to, says Henry. Find an exit.
You sprint to the nearest corner and turn left. After another minute, you reach another corner. You turn right. Suddenly, you find yourself back at the starting point. I told you you're lost, says Henry. You can't escape the Ikea. Run backwards for 20 minutes. You run in reverse for 20 minutes. Eventually, you find yourself somewhere else. It's not the Ikea. It's outside with sun and sky and things. Are you saved? Nah, of course not. It's just a regular old park with some trees and a footpath. Look for the street and find a car. I found the real trees. You find a taxi with a driver snoozing behind the wheel. You slip into the passenger seat and take off. The car moves just like your old car, so you figure you won't have to too much trouble being a taxi driver. You spend the rest of your life driving around a taxi, living in your own private cloud cuckoo land. Hmm? And the moral of the story is... You never finished. Yeah, I guess that's about right. The moral of the story is nobody puts grieve in a corner. And the moral of the story is don't believe people who tell you that you're a character in a computer game. The oh. The end of the story is 10122. One oh one two two. It's the answer to everything, says Plethora. Yes, but what does it mean, you ask? It's up to you to find out, she says. You'll have to search your heart for the answer. Only then will you find the point of the story. Hark, Triton! Hark! Fellow, bid our father the Sea King rise! But hark the call of the Sea King, Bellow, and be released from this mortal coil. Even in that abyss, ye might be re ye remembered, yet remembered, for even in death there is life. One oh one two two is a zip code in New York. Is it really? The sound of your voice echoes throughout the story. Throughout the room, sorry. So, 10122, what is the point of the story? Asks the voice. Um, you're a crazy person? The man begins laughing. You feel a chill going through your body. As if you've watched a scary movie. 10122 is, uh, what part of New York is it? It's... Like... Near Bryant Park. It, it's like, uh, by Penn Station. Near Penn Station. No more questions, says the man. The story must end. The story has ended. What was the point of the story, you ask angrily? An interesting question, the man says softly. Would you like to hear my opinion? No, thank you, you say dismissively. The man sighs. Go to Penn Station and take a midnight train going anywhere. Oh, sir, the man says, don't make me follow you into these dark streets. You look over your shoulder and see nobody there. Try one more time. It's getting, it's really, it's really late. But we're gonna go and do the art in a minute, but there's a train leaving for Washington in an hour. You're going to catch it. The story ends here, the man says. The story has multiple interpretations. You may think about the story as you travel to Washington. You snatch your ticket from the man and run to the tracks when you get there. The train is just coming in. 
like the state of Wash like cause that's a long fucking train ride. You board and find an empty seat. The trains begin the train begins moving. You put your head against the window and watch as New York City fades into the background. It feels good to be leaving the city. Goodbye, New York, you say. I'll miss you. You look at your ticket. This is kind of hitting close to home, because it's like, I don't want to leave New York. This would be very sad for me. Your seat is in the smoking car. Just as you stand up, you hear a loud hissing sound. The train has reached Washington. That was very fast. Is that you... You damn laughing snakes hissing at me? An old man sits in your seat, dressed in a gray suit, black tie, smiles at you warmly. Hello, Jacob, he says. You're the man from the other train, you say angrily. What's going on? The man lights up his pipe. I know a lot about you, he says softly. God damn it, what's happening now? And the music fits this really nicely too, but god damn it, it's too late for this. Who are you? You ask, terrified. I'm a friend, the man says. Do you know where we are? You look out the window, the train has entered a dark tunnel. You can barely make out the man's face. We're in a tunnel, you say nervously. A dark tunnel. In City 17? City 17. The man exhales. A fitting name for a city, like 17 keys on a piano. Each key produces a different note when struck, but it is still part of the same instrument. Where are you taking me, you ask. The man doesn't answer. I know who you are, G-Man. Did you create the laughing snakes? That's, that's like very interesting writing, even if the keys are not correct. Ah, uh, but that's fine. The G-Man, the man says, smiling. I wondered if you would figure it out. The powers that be didn't think you would when they found out about your hacking abilities. I asked to take care of you myself. You don't say anything. You know that the G-Man is responsible for everything. I thought it would be interesting to see if a person such as yourself could even survive in the real world, the G-Man says calmly. So I had you chosen to take that test, and now you are here with me. Why, you say, what will happen to me? That depends on you, the G-Man says. <laughs> the Ikea was a test, wasn't it? You lost Gordon, and now you need me. The Yam approaches. I already have all the agents I need, the G-Man says, but it, that's not quite true. I lost one. He was a problem in the first place, but it seemed unlikely that he would go rogue, so I didn't bother keeping an eye on him. I won't make that mistake again. Jesus Christ. Yeah, it's canon. I need you to identify potential traitors and other dangers. What are you talking about? What's going on, you say? The Combine are taking over Earth, the G-Man says, as you look out the window at various buildings flying past at incredible speed. We need to get you up to speed on, on what is happening, the G-Man says. <laughs> Hold on to your seat. 
Your stomach drops out from underneath you as the vehicle does a dangerous maneuver. You feel as if your internal organs have been shifted to the left. You close your eyes and wait for the G-Man to continue speaking. First of all, he says, who is the greatest danger to us? Who can harm us the most? Who can bring down the wrath of the Combine on our heads and prevent us from taking over? You don't answer terrorists, the G-Man says. The worst terrorists would be those who have hazardous abilities. I'm not a terrorist, you protest. Of course you're not. I'm a clown. I'm a clown, you say. You're a theoretical physicist, the G-Man says. Look, I'm just telling you what the public will be told. We're going to create a cover story for you. You'll have several, in fact. The one you use most is that you were studying subatomic particles. I'm a clown. I'm a theoretical physicist, you said. I'm a clown. I'm a clown, you say. I'm a clown. I'm a clown, you say. They won't care what you really are. You, they'll only care about the cover story. The G-Man says it doesn't matter what you really were. It just matters what we tell everyone you were. Well, it's, it's really good G-Man dialogue, weirdly enough. Okay, I have to go now. Name. Dok. Jacob. Nook. Status. Employed. Calling defection. Spies, you say? <laughs> no! <laughs> no more dialogue. <laughs> you are currently assigned to a listening station in Ikea's basement. Oh, fuck off. Alright, that's enough of this. All right, well, that got kind of amazing for a while, but we, we have to stop. It's, we've been, it's four. It's four in the morning. Guaranteed, there will be another AI dungeon stream. Some of these stories were really fucking weird and have room to be developed. Like, that particular story could have gone in any number of directions, and it could have been amazing. But it also was getting very repetitive, because it was like, you will work for me as a spy, but, um, yeah, I'm going to do the art. Thank you for watching. Um, that was getting real weird and meta. More AI dungeon before Halloween sometime. The black tablet will be here for you, chat.